I never in my life seen a 2K community this divided. There's accusations of 2K blacklisting content creators. 2K themselves are firing back at some of the criticisms. People are upset with season three level 40 reward being ass cheeks and the dribblers is polarized. Some people love this new patch that nerfed Zigzag. Some people hate it, bro. Yo, all right, so this is the format of this video. I'm gonna run through the news and what people are saying and then we're gonna get deeper into what it really means. Yo, if y'all new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. You'll be updated next time I drop a video it's a big satisfying red button when you hit it you smile and uh, drop a like on the video you don't have to but you know it'll help the video do better okay let's get into it so when i mean polarizing i mean polarizing ja bridgeforth tweets if you like the nba 2k22 season 3 patch go see a doctor therapist psychiatrist counselor mentor and a life coach and then on the opposite side of the spectrum davo is tweeting saying just played my first game after the patch and i love it w patch so then Ronnie jumped in on the mix and started poking fun at some of the people that were nerfed with the season three updates. He said, left, right, left, right spammers be like with the Squid Games meme. Hank the Tank hops in the mix, says this is the best patch 2K ever dropped. And not 12 hours later tweeting, not only did 2K nerf dribbling, but they decided to drop the world's worst season rewards I've ever seen in my life a few days after. I won't be shocked if even more people stop playing 2K. The frustration began to mount from there because people realized the level 40 reward for season three was ass. Power coming to that realization on Twitter saying, WTF is this level 40 reward? And it was like the iced out animation uh, skins. And if y'all missed my last video, I kind of went into detail on all the changes with season three and the patch that dropped. The main thing you need to know is that they nerfed zigzagging. So the people that used to boost this way and then boost this way and boost this way. Now, not only is it way more challenging to boost in every, not even challenging, it's just not possible to boost in other directions. But if you do it for long enough, it actually penalizes you when you shoot the basketball now. So I guess you have more of an incentive to get your teammates involved and stop zigzagging. Power follows up though. He says, seasons needs to be eliminated forever. Worst system ever. The same scarf as level 21 reward in the store is available to buy, but a different color, lol. And he shows screenshots here of the level 21 iced out scarf and then on swags in a different color is the same scarf why even grind for 40 when all the rewards are in swags <laughs> Regardless of whether the rewards are good or not, I'm not enjoying the game. I miss having a system that rewarded people for playing, not punishing them. I miss rewards that were new, not last year's swags inventory. I miss having events where we had a goal to complete together, not divided us by our archetype. But most of all, I miss this community. Yeah, that's a goddamn poem he dropped right there. <laughs> so more and more people were having the conversation. I guess there's plenty of content critics talking about it. And I mean, not only did a patch drop, but a season three update dropped. So there was plenty to talk about. 2K, I'm not gonna lie, for the the better part of two days was trending on my Twitter. It wasn't trending on overall Twitter, but because I'm in the community and I'm in the bubble, anytime there's enough conversation about 2K, it ends up popping out on the side of my page. All of that to say that the conversation was being had by thousands of people on Twitter all day for days. But then things began to get more interesting because Power decided to drop this bomb. He said, okay, I'm just gonna say it so people stop asking. I'm not gonna get a logo and 2K is purposefully not giving anyone in DF a logo because someone at 2K has a personal vendetta against me. It is what it is, but it's petty. They are punishing all of my friends because they don't like me. Hank responded saying they have a vendetta against me also. Badge Plug responds, bro, that is not true. Just keep grinding and stay positive. I think he's trolling there. To which Power responds, they basically told me I don't do rumors. Solo responds, what did I do to them that was so bad, Power? Power responds, nothing, all me. This is actually the first time this conversation has been had publicly, I believe. I mean, y'all know my history. If you don't, I'll fill you in. I was one of the first people to receive a logo when they first started doing it in 2K19. There was probably a handful of like 10 people back then who had a logo. It was almost exclusively large content creators, Troy Dan, et cetera, et cetera. Like the content creators you guys are probably familiar with. Not only that, but my face scan was quite literally in the game. So when you guys watch my NBA 2K19 videos, you'll see my face that was scanned in 2K's a trailer where they do it at, they scan my face and everything. Uh, but something happened between 2K19 to 2K20. I wanna make a distinction here. There's 2K, the development team, Visual Concepts, and then there's 2K, the publisher. The, these are the guys that are paid to like promote the game and sell as many copies as possible. These are not the same thing. They kind of, they work together with one another because the devs obviously wanna sell more of their game, but the publisher owns the game, the devs create it. So think about a label promoing Lil Baby's new mixtape or 
or whatever. Think about it like that. That's the form of the relationship I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not sure how the dev team feels about my videos. I mean, I've gotten DMs from time to time from some of them uh, discussing something I've said in a video, either correcting me because they felt like I was wrong or like congratulating me on saying something that like not a lot of people talk on. I'm not sure. At the end of the day, I never, my goal, and I say this in a lot of my videos, is never to offend the developers. I don't know the first thing about developing. I took a course in grade 11 and learned a little bit of JavaScript, and all it taught me was that developing video games is fucking hard. That being said, a lot of the stuff I say in my videos is like hire more people. I understand the stress on the developers is crazy. The community events that I did go to, I'm fully aware that these developers run 60 to 80 hours, especially in crunch time, trying to get this game out. So the solution is not to get the developers to work harder, it's to just get more of them. There's plenty of talented developers out there. I'm saying that to say that my frustration a lot of the time lies with the publisher. So that being said, when I get on these videos and I'm just honest to y'all about how I feel about the game and that this needs to change and it's this person's fault, a lot of that blame lies on the publisher, 2K Sports. For whatever reason, between the time 2K19 and 2K20, they just felt like I wasn't deserving of another logo. I made jokes in my videos about how they stripped me of my logo and things of that, that nature, but I've never outwardly asked anybody at 2K because some of the people still follow me for a logo. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm not begging for this logo. I've never really cared that much about the logo. It was cool to have, but I'm not bending over backwards to receive one of them. That being said, the logo became like a bigger and a bigger deal as time went on. And 2K has these like logo shows now where they hand out like dozens of logos. And you'll never see me in the replies or even tweeting about the logo show because again, to me, it's just not a big deal. It does suck that my like real face scan, that 2K scan, they could just put it on my player if they wanted to and they don't do it. I feel like my video, there's something about me, it makes me want to play the game more just knowing that my real face is for real in the game and it looks fucking realistic. But because I know what it's like to not receive the benefits of having a good relationship with 2K, I believe what Power is saying. I don't know how many of y'all were paying attention at the launch of NBA 2K22, but there were plenty of content creators that got access to like news exclusively before I was even aware that things were going on. And this was stuff that was fed to them by 2K. It sucks. It's like I'm playing at a disadvantage because I want to have my own mind and I don't want to like re recite talking points that somebody gives me. Bro, I built this channel like and I my blow up was in 2K17. I built it with me speaking my own mind. It would it would defraud everything that I am and everything this channel is about if for whatever reason I was willing to compromise that for a working professional relationship. Ever since 2K20, I imagine it's somewhat cordial. At the end of the day, I get to sit here and make videos so I can't complain too much, right? It's a little disheartening to know that I feel like I'm a big part of this community, but it, it never gets paid out by 2K in terms of like, there's no love shown in reciprocation. And yeah, I can sit here and be critical on these videos, but bro, I sit here and I play the fucking game, dog. I play the game and I drop videos on the game and I'm part of the community. There's times where even to me, bro, it just felt like I was being ousted while other people were being welcomed because they were willing to do what I wasn't. So I, to some extent, I feel what Power is talking about. The community discussion kind of just grew from there. There were people comparing 2K22 to 2K18, which is something that I never thought would ever happen. If you play 2K18, you know exactly why. Hank the Tank tweeted, I hate to say it, but 2K18 is greater than 2K22. He probably just saying that in the moment. That's a fucking wild statement. I think he's wrong. But then things began to get interesting because 2K themselves started firing shots back at some of the content creators that were levying this criticism. There was Luck on Twitter who said, 2K logo shows are a joke. First off, no disrespect to anyone who got logos. Why is the logo show about smaller creators? It takes away from the big creators who also deserve it. Why does 2K clown other 2K workers for speaking good about DF? Keep our name out your mouth, lazy ad company. So, I mean, he's dropping some private information that there's no real way to verify, but 2K is clowning developers or, or people who work for 2K that are speaking good about DF. At the end of the day, 2K's goal is to make as much money as possible. If somebody gets in the way of that, I'm sure they're gonna be comfortable steamrolling them. There's nothing they'll stop at in the pursuit of profit. I'm telling you, bro, this is how fucking businesses work, y'all. There's a handful of developers and publishers that I don't feel like would act like that. But for the most part, most publishers will move in accordance to what makes more money. I'm telling you, if you don't make the more money, they'll pack you up ASAP. But anyway, Ronnie responded to that tweet saying, see, you are discrediting people. So let me do that to you now. A guy on Twitter named Mills said, guys like myself, Eric and GGB and countless others are living proof that you can be critical of games and still work with them closely as creators. It's a matter of two-way respect and establishing
establishing strong relationships. I mean, there's no doubt that for, for the most part, 2K takes criticism better than the average publisher. 2K gets levied a lot of criticism, mostly because their games come out unfinished. But I've, I've seen publishers act way more egregiously than 2K's ever acted, objectively. So what he's saying, I would argue, is pretty true for the most part. You could be respectful to developers and publishers and keep that, that respect can stay there while you criticize them. I feel like the point 2K misses a lot of the time is that it gets frustrating to be in this community and know that y'all could be doing better. And it's like, it's almost negligent how, how careless these games drop sometimes or how careless these updates are or some decisions are made. And it's like, you just didn't think about what community would want at all. So you, 2K also has to understand the reason people feel charged is because they care about the game. So if they get on a video and they express the way they feel about the game is it shouldn't be taken as disrespect as much as should be taken that there's a guy who's passionate about this thing and to them you're ruining it so how could they not be angry how could they not be heated and charged in that conversation but anyway all that to say mitchell quote tweeted that tweet i just read out earlier saying this is the tweet you're allowed to criticize that's perfectly fine we love to hear that we're actively trying to work closer with creators in fact we have been trying to convince people internally every day how valuable you are like every day mills nails it here I, yo, bro, this statement right here, this shit like this scares me, dog. As a content creator, it scares me, bro. You have to convince people that content creators are valuable. There's people that don't believe it until you tell them otherwise. It's crazy. It's scary, bro. I'm telling you, when this is your job, it's scary that, like, at any moment, you can get iced. Like, they could just put you on the sideline and you could be playing at a disadvantage. That's scary. He's right. For the most part, 2K does allow, for all parts, they allow criticism. If And 2K could criticize criticize back they're perfectly like ronnie firing back at somebody is not an indictment on ronnie ronnie's allowed to do that in fact he's been doing it more and more that's ronnie's opinion the same way you was giving your opinion we all are entitled to our freedom of speech the only problem i have is when it feels like people are receiving benefits by like doing what 2k wants to be done at that point it's like what's the word for it it's sponsored i guess like when i sit here and i do a sponsorship on this channel i say at the beginning and the end of the sponsorship that it's sponsored just to to let you guys know that hey guys i'm being paid to say these things this is an ad now you would hope that the person you're watching has the integrity to just take ads that are like things that they believe in but if you're receiving benefits for something and then at no point ever disclosing that you're receiving benefits for that thing then it is a little bit deceptive too but the conversation continued annoying put out some tweets saying i hope when the numbers come back from 2k on their sales and online activity on the game it humbles them to realize the power of not only content creators but of a community who doesn't get what they asked for great game but the community doesn't get heard it's funny 2k21 atrocious in terms of views relative to other 2k's 2k21 sold incredible it's not always a correlation between like how many people are watching the game and how successful it sells it's not one-to-one -one. so we'll see i think in february is when 2k is going to release their report and then we'll see then how well 2k sold between the time it launched in september all the way up until february and how it compares to previous 2k's i'll probably drop a video on this channel with my reaction followed up though saying the game game is not being touched for the rest of the year if i'm being honest not the same as 20 pandemic just dry boring content and unplayable 2k so dirt right now i feel like they're going down the madam route just keeping it 100 i feel like this is worthy of like its own documentary so there's no point of diving too much deeper but this is actually the general sentiment for a lot of people it's funny because when i talk to a lot of casual players they don't see these same problems it's a lot of the people who've been in the community for a while that are upset with with the way things are people that are newer to the community are like they're like on newbie mode like they don't really see any of these problems they're not heated in these exchanges and for the most part they're not even actually part of a lot of these conversations there's a lot of you see a lot of these ogs talking which i mean it's not necessarily a bad thing but i have a lot of conversations with people that don't cite nothing wrong they they be talking to me like yo 2k is a blast i be on the park i have these three builds i have a great time playing with my friends and then on the polar opposite is the people that have been doing it for six seven years talking about yo this shit is ass this is ass this was better before and, and things of that nature. Shakedown put out a tweet saying, admit it, this is the coldest City Slam champion in the game. Prove me wrong, show me yours. Showing off some of his gear within the game. Man, that's a fire fucking shot, jeez. That's in the game? That looks like a real photo someone took. God damn. Someone in my stream said they didn't know anyone who got a logo yesterday, so I kept it real with them. A couple other people that got left out too, you know what I mean? I'm not the only one. 
It's always the next one, bro. I'm not tripping. It's not going to stop the grind. I don't know half the people who got one. That's how it's supposed to be, though. I agree with him, actually, on that. I know that a lot of large content creators feel like it's disrespectful that 2K is not showing love to them by blessing them with a logo. And maybe for, like, the first month I didn't get one in 2K20, I was like, damn, 2K. Like, I felt pretty like, I was like, come on, dog. Come on, doggy. But after that, I was like, yeah. Shouldn't it go to the smaller content creators? Isn't it a lot harder to be a smaller content creator than a larger content creator? As a larger content creator, you probably getting games regardless. Like, you could do without the logo. The logo is going to bless some of the smaller content creators that might get some attention as a result. They might get some games as a result, and they might get some followers as a result. Well, although I feel like the larger content creators play a big role, and, and it would be nice for them to be recognized in some way, bro. I have no problem with smaller content creators being blessed with a logo. The reality is it kind of does water down the value of a logo, but I mean, as Ronnie said right here on this tweet, exactly great video. Corey and I were talking about this this morning, saying that 0.0003% of daily players have a logo. But isn't this what makes a logo a logo? You'll know those that have it if you didn't before. It's our dream to reward those by doing it the right way. I'm sorry I was late. I can't f***ing read correct. The reality is, is the logo doesn't always translate to views. I would argue it doesn't translate to much views at all. But it is a lot of motivation for smaller content creators. That, And I know how easy it can be to convince yourself to quit when you're a small content creator. I don't see a problem with them blessing small content creators at all. Especially because in the midst of doing that, they, a lot of the time they do bless larger content creators with a logo anyway. The logo to me is a non-issue. But the issue of viewership continues to get brought up. Badge Plug says, this is extremely embarrassing. I will never suck 2K for a logo. This season just started and alt 4 has more viewers what is alt 4 what is osu never even heard of these games yet they complete with the multi-billion dollar corporation uninvited guest to a screenshot here of a uh, live viewership for nba 2k22 badge follows up saying i'm gonna continue playing the game trying to do entertaining content for you guys like these wages i want to do and go for these big streaks until i dislike the game but damn 2k what are you doing so sad it got to the point where some content creators like double h just flat out started posting for Fortnite related stuff. You're not even posting 2K no more. Look, it's a Fortnite rumor. If you guys cared, guys, Tilted Towers might be coming back. Low key, new Fortnite season is a W. First of all, I saw some fucking dickhead in my comment section talking about watching Asian pretend to care about Fortnite because one of my old, like, two videos ago was sponsored by Fortnite. All right, dickhead, you don't watch my videos. I've been talking about how much I can suck Epic Games in a lot of my videos because Epic Games is one of the examples of a good dev team, dog. It's a good publisher and a good dev team. They did it right. Sony invested in them because they, they have fucking leverage. They run it and the most popular gaming engine, Anyway, that kind of just got me heated because he was basically saying I was dishonest, besides the point. All right, back on topic. So there's a lot of criticism being levy. Agent, how you feel about it? I don't think blacklist is the right word. Blacklist would be like 2K saying, damn, don't play this game no more. You're getting banned. And there's been publishers in, in history that have just flat out banned people. EA is one of them. I've seen them do it to a guy in the FIFA community before. And we all just pretend like this didn't happen last year. A lot of y'all have to realize content creators is not you. You are not us in terms of like you just hop on the game and play with your friends and you get off a lot of these people have to live and die the game so they might get more frustrated than the average players because they have to make videos about it and then edit the videos about it and post it and then record more and play it and edit and upload like it's their life to do this so it's more frustrating when something goes wrong the average person isn't that invested that's the first thing the second thing is is true i'm party of it that 2k has favorites they have people that they prefer to work with then they have others that they just kind of ignore like i'm just one of the good people that they ignore that being said there's people in 2k that follow me if for whatever reason i ever needed something i imagine i could reach out whether or not they respond is completely up to them but i'm not blacklisted it does suck that there's times where someone else gets access to news before me or to a screenshot before me or whatever it happened a lot at the launch of nba 2k22 it sucks that my face is not in the game no more my logo is not in the game no more but the reality is if these were things i cared about i'd just ask any one of them and who knows they might shut me down and be like nah you're too negative or maybe you criticize too much i have no idea what they might say reality is is i kind of like operating independently the cut the 2k community has shown me a ton of support playback is more of like my commentary reaction channel i have with low agent zero one's more of my lifestyle channel i'll do videos with just like me and things that i care about or i find interesting of course y'all probably watch a and p we got the fake merch from like two years ago on right now this is my group channel i have with five of my friends and then peer-to-peer -peer is my podcast number one gaming podcast on the 
fucking planet. All of that to say is years ago, I realized I don't wanna be dependent on 2K. If I wanna do this stuff for a living, I should treat it like it's a job, like something I should take seriously, not something I just do passively. And that's what I've been doing and I've diversified. The reality is I'm gonna do these 2K videos for as long as I can. That's what I owe the 2K community for giving me this head start and allowing me to do the thing that I've been dreaming about for my whole f life for a living. There's plenty to be thankful about. There's worse fates in life than you having to make 2K videos. That being said, 2K is, and I do mean this, one of the most atrociously ran games on the planet. If you're a part of any other gaming community or you watch other gaming videos on the internet, you can relate. For some reason, it just it just is like negligent, careless, stupid mistakes, and 2K makes them frequently, so I fully understand when people is heated about it. Reality is, is 2K has their favorites. There's people that's gonna have access to stuff that you won't have access to if you're not willing to bend the knee. These are all the reality of being a content creator. I guess no one's just spoken on it publicly is the first time that it's happening. I'm not upset about any of this stuff. I, I guess like in the moment I might be like, damn, everybody else got the screenshot before me? Cause keep in mind, I make videos that's news. So if someone else has access to something days ahead of time, has a video planned, and when all y'all get to see it publicly, boom, that moment they drop a video, they're ahead of the curve. But f it, man, I've built out this as like a career for me and I'm thankful for that. So I guess all of that to say, the 2K community is in a very interesting polar rising position. I'm gonna make a documentary probably in the next week or two just diving deep into some of the issues why, but I've never seen people as polarized as what I'm seeing right now. 2K themselves is taking the liberty to fire shots at content creators, content creators firing shots back. People either love or hate the update and it's like everyone's kind of just waiting to see like how did this 2K perform? Did it perform horribly? Did it perform incredibly? Anyway, that's been basically all the news. I don't want to drag it on longer than it has to be. It's been a long video already. If y'all enjoyed the video, man, y'all want to see more, subscribe to the channel links to all my other channels in the description if y'all want to catch that content otherwise i'll catch you guys in the next one i'm out peace